5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. You might have heard the word micro, microflora before. That's actually a relatively important word to know. What micro just means is microscopic, as in very small. And flora refers to like a colony. We have a small colony of something. So in this case, we have our microflora refers to colonies of bacteria or fungi or something else, which are usually on our skin, in our digestive tract, digestive tract, our mouth. It can be in the vagina or on the vaginal tract as well. Skin, digestive tract, mouth, vagina, and the respiratory tract. These are actually areas which aren't necessarily considered to be inside our body because inside our body is at our tissue and in our blood. So if, for example, these were our cells, this were our blood, and this would be inside our body, but oops, always happens, always happens. <laughs> if this were inside our body, then let's say if this is the digestive tract, we usually have some cells sort of beneath it, so these might be our cells. Then we have our blood beneath that as well. But the digestive tract itself is often not considered to be inside our body. It's just like, well, it is inside our body, but not you know, inside our tissue or inside our blood. So we can actually have, we can have bacteria which make a living here. Right? They make a living here, so they can go onto our digestive tract, for example, our skin, our mouth, our respiratory tract, and our vagina. They're all sort of the same kind of thing. They don't have any, um, they're not inside our body, so our immune system itself is not as active. So our immune system might still have some way of defending against bacteria on these areas, but they're not as active as they were if they were inside our blood or inside our tissue, so, which is why we have bacteria often inside our body, on our skin, our digestive tract, our mouth, but not inside our blood. We won't find much bacteria inside our blood because they'll get killed quite quickly. But it's also important to know what kind of bacteria might be in there. So this is, for example, an actual picture of the digestive tract. There's actually a lot of bacteria inside our digestive tract. So each of those is a different type of bacteria. And there are a lot of bacteria. So a lot of bacteria. There could be a few fungi as well, maybe some protozoa. They're just enjoying their time. right? But some of them will be good ones. So these are the good bacteria. And then there might be a few, maybe bad bacteria, bad fungi as well. These might be the bad fungi. But overall, if we have a normal micro, micro so it's the normal micro, microflora, what that means is that most of them are good, and they're actually maybe even beneficial. They keep the bad ones away, and they might even give us nutrients as well. So overall, that's not too bad. It's just a problem if that is disturbed, if that's changed, if we have an abnormal microflora in our in our digestive tract or mouth or whatever else. So the dot point itself says students will gather present and present information from secondary sources to show how a named disease, we need to not talk about named disease, results from an imbalance of microflora in humans. I seem to have a problem saying microflora, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, we need to talk about a named disease. All right, so the named disease that I chose is candiasis. Now, if you think that picture is disgusting, I had to type in candiasis into Google to get a picture, and I almost had to vomit. It, <laughs> the pictures that came up were disgusting. But this is the... Um, so, so, yeah, sorry for anyone that has candiasis, but that, that, that was disgusting. But this is the actual inside of our gastrointestinal tract, or our GI tract. And these are fungi. These are fungi infections. So this is a, obviously, again, I said earlier, usually it's all good bacteria. And this fungi might be there normally in small amounts, but here there's been a problem, and there are way too many of them, which means we have a fungal infection. Now, what is candiasis? We have to talk about that briefly. Candiasis is caused by um, candiada albicanus. Candida albi albiacans. <laughs> um, and this is a fungus. So this is a fungus. And this fungus can cause problems. Usually, again, these, in this case, the yellow one here is our fungus. 
nutrite ephrophungus. And usually there will be there might even be one here. So this one is this is our digestive tract. The thing in brown is our digestive tract. So you can see we have different type of bacteria and we have this fungus. And you know, one fungus managed to hook on. But for the rest, for this one for example, it can't fit because there's no space. So they can't really do too much. So that's good. Um, but what happens if, for example, for whatever reason, we have less bacteria? So these bacteria that are there go away. What's, what happens then? That's when we have problems. So what I wrote is it's caused by this fungus Candida albigens. And that's the first thing you should know. The second thing is that normally, if it, the condition is normal, then the, comp the competition will be okay because these bacteria here, so these bacteria which are the healthy bacteria, have taken over and most of the digestive tract is all of these good bacteria. And for the rest, because there's not enough space, the fungus has bad luck and can't find a spot they can hook onto. But if there's a disturbance, so if there's a disturbance, that's when we can have a problem. So if we have a disturbance, that means some of these might die, right? So they might die. And now you would obviously have more space, right? So if some of these die, that means you have more space and we can have more of the fungus attaching. And you have more of the fungus attaching and eventually it's going to be quite a bit of fungus. So in this, this here, um, I'm just going to draw, make some of these yellow. And these yellow are meant to be just the fungus that are there instead of the bacteria. Right, so let's say because the bacteria died, there's more space for the fungus. Let's say now there's so many fungus. Right? There's way more fungus than there were beforehand. And what is the result? Well, that makes it appear like this. Right? That's why it looks like this. Beforehand, there were maybe one or two, and that's fine. Now there's many, many more, and that's why we have a fungal infection. So these fungal infections, these microflora imbalance, so what it means by imbalance, it's, there used to be a balance between good and bad. Now there's an imbalance. And there's too many of these bad fungus, which can cause a problem. And this is, yeah, the normal flora is disturbed. And what could cause this to be disturbed? For example, if we take antibiotics that can, can disturb it, why would antibiotics cause a problem? So these antibiotics. Well, antibiotics don't kill human cells. They don't kill human cells at all, but they can kill bacterial cells. So let's say we take one, a broad spectrum antibiotics, which means it just kills basically any bacteria it can find. Or not all of them will kill any bacteria, but a higher range of bacteria, right? So if you're unlucky, that means it's also going to kill your microflora, the, the good ones in your digestive tract. And because they don't target the fungus, the fungus will stay alive. And that means we're going to have more and more of these fungus take over eventually. And that's how you can have this candiatis problem. So I'll go over the door point again. Process information, present information from second source to show how a named disease results from an imbalance of microflora in humans. So we've got this candiatis, which comes if we have a imbalance. Now, beforehand, we had plenty of these healthy bacteria, which kept the fungus away because they had no room. Then we might have used antibiotics and we're unlucky enough to get our good bacteria to be killed as well, which means the fungus has more room, takes over, and eventually we have this candiatis infection, which is caused by the candida albicans fungus. Hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.